Hi everyone, welcome to Hacker Trading and welcome to our free video series. In this video, we're going to look at support as in support and resistance. Now, support happens at the lower end of a stock's trading range and you, if a stock has already fallen by quite a bit or it's falling, then there are certain points where traders come in and buy the stock at those levels in uh, in a big way. So as you can see on this chart, we are looking at the spiders. This is the S&P 500 ETF, the SPY. And we can see a few different support points if you look back in the last 12 months. So this is a one year daily chart. So each one of these bars represents one day of trading. And this is a one year chart of the spider. So if we look back to last August and September, we can see that support points exist right here. Then it tries to come back. And again, you can see this uh, support point right there. And then here there is a strong turnaround from this support point. So let's look at what exactly these points are. And you can see that generally support points are going to be accompanied by pretty high volume. So you can see that uh, this part there is very high volume. Then again it tries to support right here. There is a bit of high volume there. And then when, you, when it comes down again, again the volume spikes. And whenever you see high volume at potential support points, um, it tells you that a lot more people are com coming in and buying it at that level. But you can see a very strong turnaround here. So what we're going to do is we'll try to understand what exactly happened in these in this span of about two or three months. So I'm going to zero in on this period right here and on the Think or Swim platform. I can choose it and boom, there we go. So now we're looking at those two months between August and September of last year, August, September and the beginning of October. So the first support point and what I've drawn here is a line. It, this is just a regular trend line and it's at a spider level of 110. Now, whenever you draw a line like this, it doesn't mean that whenever the stock approaches the line that it's going to do an imminent turnaround. That's not what it's supposed to mean. It's just It just tells you that that is an area of support. And because many traders are looking at the same areas, you can expect, and that's the whole psychology of technical analysis and support and resistance as well. It's because all traders are looking at these levels and so they expect uh, a some sort of a battle or a fight when the stock approaches those levels. And that's really what these areas are supposed to signify. It doesn't mean that the stock is going to turn around and go up. All it means is you're going to see a battle over there and sometimes the buyers win the battle and sometimes the sellers win the battle. So if the selling pressure remains high, it's possible that the stock will break down through the support level and continue to go down. But in this case, over a period of two to three months, what we are seeing on the spiders is that it tries to approach this support area about two or three times. And in each time, it's held up quite well. So let's start with this point right here. And this is on August 9th and um, it reaches a good support point. You can see the volume is very high and from this bar to this bar, you do a nice uh, turnaround. So this is obviously a good support point. Now what happens is as we go along and we reach the next, uh, the next time it tries to or comes close to, the, to that support line is at this point right here. And you can see again, immediately the volume has uh, gone up uh, relative to the previous bars. And sure enough, the, the spider turns around and starts to go up. But, you know, overall, there seems to be general downward pressure on the market. So, you know, it starts to come down again. And let's see what happens here. So if you look at this bar, it closes right on this support line, but it closes at the bottom. So at this point, you're not sure if this support area is going to hold or not, because the day closes at the bottom, it closes on the support line. And so now you have to wait for the next day to see what's going to go, what's going to happen with uh, the spiders. So now if you see the next day, the next day actually gaps down because it opens right here at about 108, goes down to 107, and then it turns back and goes up all the way to 112. 
and it does it on higher volume. So this tells you again that even though it broke through the support line, it did not close below the support line. So, you know, it closed right here at 112. So technical traders will tell you, technical analysts will tell you that this support area held over here because it did not close below the support line. So this point will always represent a strong support area for the spider. So if we go back to our longer term chart and I've drawn the 110 area as a support line, the next time the spiders comes down to about 110, you can expect a battle like this. You can see this was a battle right here because what ended up happening here was you have large range bars and higher volumes and there was a battle right at the support line. And, and that's exactly what the support lines tell you that there's going to be a battle here. So price moved quite a bit on both these bars. And in fact, on this bar, it went all the way down from 107 to 112. And that's the spider. So bear in mind that this represents one tenth of the S&P 500. So in S&P 500 terms, this uh, on this particular day, the S&P 500 went from about 1074 all the way to about 1120. So that's a that's a huge move uh, for the S&P 500, almost uh, close to 5%. So that was a huge day. But that's exactly what will happen at support areas. You're going to have a battle and the battle uh, may or may not be decisive, but it could go either way. Sometimes support areas hold, sometimes uh, they break down. And so it's always good to wait a bar or two or a day or two after the, the battle and see what happened and see what and try to understand the psychology of what happened in that battle. So in general, that's how you should try to read support lines. Now resistance is just the opposite and the only difference is it's going to happen when you reach higher uh, points. So you can see right here you have one resistance point here again it tries to go through that and uh, similarly you'll see some resistance points on the upside as well. So as a investor if you if you're looking at these charts you should what you should do is look at a one year or a two year or a three year chart and identify uh, where are the key support points and you can draw these lines and these lines will remain on your platform even after you close uh, your platform. So the next time you open it up these lines uh, these lines will be there on your stocks. So you, you once you've drawn this out then you know that if a stock is approaching a support point or if it's approaching a resistance point you know what to do and if you're if you're unsure of what's going to happen you can you can take your position off and wait for the battle to happen wait for some decisiveness and then you make your move but support and resistance points are not automatic trend reversal points it depends what happens what kind of a battle takes place and who wins that battle just because this 110 area has been a strong support point at least three times in the past one year it doesn't mean that if the S&P, if the spider falls down, down, down to that level again, that it's going to hold. It could break through and it could go down depending upon how, uh, how strong of a selling uh, pressure there exists. So that's as far as support and resistance. If you have any questions, please send us an email at info at hackertrading.com and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.